Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, tonight we got uh, Monday Night Meatloaf. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So a couple uh, viewer questions that we're going to answer uh, with a demonstration. Um, we got some new tools that I picked up over the weekend uh, and over the last couple of weeks uh, that you may have seen some of them in the background of some of the videos, but I figured I'd talk about them real quick. And let's see what else. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so the first one is uh, you've probably seen this in a couple of the videos already. I've already started using it. It's a uh, Standridge uh, surface plate, and uh, it was one of those. Uh, deals that you just can't pass up so basically uh, if you can pick it up you can have it that was the deal um, so I figured out how to pick it up so anyway uh, it's uh, about three feet uh, oh, actually 33 inches um, 840 millimeters by what is it this way? I thought it was three feet so 44 uh, inches or 1100 uh, and some odd millimeters and then uh, it's uh, it's eight inches thick uh, 200 millimeters thick and uh, it's pretty heavy so uh, best guess right now is uh, I haven't weighed it but uh, just doing some calculations and uh, moving it around it's 12 or 1400 pounds something like that uh, is, is the current guess um, granite varies by type and um, the density varies a fair amount so uh, uh, you know you can look up a number and uh, and it can be fairly far off uh, the interesting part is this was a uh, it was a base for a machine and uh, a laser interferometer uh, sat on this for measuring some kind of wafers or something I'm not sure what exactly it wasn't clear but this is one of the highest grade uh, um, accuracy plates that Standridge makes and I'll take you in close and show you the label down here um, it's beyond inspection grade so uh, anyway the price was right so uh, I pounced on it and I'm already using it it's really nice it's got some tapped holes in it you can hold things down and it's just nice having a, a, a nice flat work surface close to the mill and uh, where you're measuring and doing stuff like that okay so here's a Here's a close-up of the label, and um, so its overall accuracy is 25 millionths of an inch across the whole thing. Um, so th that's pretty impressive, actually, because your inspection grade, uh, this side, this size is probably uh, double or triple that. Um, and the guy that I got it from said that it's you know as good as they they asked Standridge when they built these things uh, to make them as good as they could make them and uh, this is what they came back with um, anyway so uh, I don't you know I don't need that kind of accuracy but uh, hey you know when they're giving it away for free hey I'll take it whatever right all right so here's the next acquisition um, once again I Craig you know I'm a Craigslist junkie so uh, this popped up on Craigslist uh, not far from here and uh, I emailed the guy and uh, nobody had jumped on it and so I went up there and took a look at it and anyway I ended up buying it obviously the, um, it's an 18 inch Troike uh, rotary table so this is uh, uh, 460 millimeters uh, diameter and it's a horizontal vertical so and I'm not going to do it for the video but you can stand it up on this end too and use it to you know the axis this direction um, so we'll be making some accessories for this this is going to be a good little project here uh, we got to make some centering plugs and some little uh, some little accessories here um, it was missing the uh, um, it was missing the hand wheel. It's missing uh, the little thumb screw for the uh, for the dial here. But other than that, and it seems to have a little oil leak too. We'll chase after that and see what we can do there. But the guy told me it had never been on a machine. It was used for some kind of inspection or calibration. So, and there's there's no marks in this at all. Like anything was even clamped to it. 
So uh, I'm pretty happy about that. Anyway, that was uh, uh, it was a good price, and um, um, it's bigger than I wanted, you know. But uh, for a horizontal vertical, uh, Bridgeport makes one that's in this size range, but it's it's much lower. That's actually a really really nice table. Um, but this is a pretty good one, and um, um, this is going to come in real handy when we work on that big etching press hand wheel. Actually, let me go grab that, uh, that template. So the idea there, we're going to do something like this. So we're going to put that big hand wheel on there and um, clamp it down. And what I need to do is that outer, the outer rim of the hand wheel, I need to round that off so that it's a, it's comfortable on the hand. It's a, uh, yeah, get rid of the sample piece. Anyway, uh, so that'll be a cool project. So we're going to hang that off the side of the, uh, the mill over there. And, uh, so it'll be a real cool, uh, real cool mill setup, uh, kind of not your, not your everyday mill stuff. And, uh, just for a, just for kind of joke and uh, size reference, there's my little uh, the little four incher uh, kind of put in perspective there. So uh, anyway, so that's a, that was a new acquisition for the shop. Okay, so a little tool review here. We some flea market finds. Um, so let's kind of go through those. Um, some interesting stuff. So let's do the we'll do the machinist stuff first here of interest. Um, so this, this all came from one guy here, uh, and this was, uh, what did he charge me for all this? I think it was like 10 bucks. Um, so we got a nice little, uh, um, is this a brew baker? Yeah, it's a brew baker, um, three eighths diameter, two flute, nice and sharp. This is a high speed end mill. Um, it's just a nice looking end mill welding shank on it, so that's good. You know, hey, who doesn't need a another uh, little three ace end mill? And then uh, this one was three bucks here. Um, now this one's kind of weird. I said, gee, I wonder why that one's three dollars. So I opened it up and looked at it. Well, you can see that it's been massively relieved here. Now, and whoever did it did kind of a snorkely job on it there, but it's okay. Um, and so you go, gee, what do you use that for? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know. But if I need one, you know how long it takes you to grind that down like that? Um, that's certainly worth three. Oh, it's uh, 7 16 diameter. Um, just the, the fact that somebody already ground this down for me to relieve it. So, you know, this would be something like a T slot or, um, you know, some weird overhanging thing where you got to cut a groove in the side of something you know maybe you're going to cut a little groove in the in the side and you don't want to change the setup you know and you need a little step there or something who knows um but uh, you know and i can clean these up a little bit if i feel like it but i you know i'm probably just going to throw it in the drawer and just write relieved on it and um you know if i need something like that it's there right three dollar opportunity cost um, so, you know, put it in stock, right? Now this guy here, I picked it up and it feels hard to me, and it is. Um, so it's a nice, it's nicely ground tool steel of some sort. Don't know what kind, uh, hard to tell. Um, and the guy had a pair of calipers there, so I just kind of measured it. And it measured uh, one inch by, what was it? Yeah, it was one inch. Um, one and a half by two and uh, and it looked like it was pretty accurate right so a uh, little corrosion there um, so I said okay I'll, I'll just get it you know it's just a spacer block for something right well I got home and I measured it with a micrometer and it's 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 spot on it's within a, a couple of tenths of, uh, of advertised size there um, so it's sort of like a one, two, three block, but uh, you know, it's a one, one and a half, two instead of a one, two, three block. Uh, now, I dug around, I was hoping to find two, right? You know, it's always nice to have a pair like that, but uh, he didn't have another one. But anyway, one, I'll take the one. Um, somebody nearby him 
had a bunch of wrenches, and these are uh, these are Proto, you know, which is a name brand, you know, nice wrench. Uh, these are nine sixteenths, uh, roughly fourteen millimeters, uh, for our metric viewers. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, no, everybody could use another nine sixteenths wrench. Uh, you know, all the crap you work on uh, with three ace uh, fasteners in it. You know, you can leave leave these all over the place or hang it somewhere or whatever. Anyway, two bucks a piece. Uh, I'm not going to pass them up for two bucks a piece, right? You know, you did, you look at them, you go, well, I don't really need them, right? I mean, that's the first thing you think of, right? But then, you know, it's really price dependent. So when you ask and he says two bucks, you go, oh, you know, now what do you do? You got to buy them, right? <laughs> two bucks a piece, right? Okay. So let's set this stuff over here a little bit. So the next one, uh, we were kind of talking about this, uh, this kind of uh, weird uh, masking tape that I showed the other day. And then, so a, a guy had some out there, some more of it, um, and he had it all wrapped up. So this is the same crud here. But um, what I thought was, the, one of the reasons I bought it was because the name was on the inside here. And um, so this is uh, Protect Plastic and Supply Company, and uh, I'll put the contact info up on the uh, up on the video there. But um, this is a nice. Let's find the end here. Um, a nice tape, and it's it's fiendishly sticky. Um, you know, you got to protect something, right? You don't want to mar it up you can put that on there and it'll stay on and look at that I can't I can't even really rip it it isn't even cut that great so anyway um, so it's kind of like uh, shelf paper uh, type thickness and it seems to be pretty bomb proof uh, and I put some um, you know, one thing I found that uh, that I don't like about it is I put some on a piece and I milled it the other day. Um, example like this, right? And uh, actually, it was trimmed off to the edge, and I milled it off. And what happened was the cutter, you know, was running real fast, and it melted a little bit on the edge, and it drug some of that material onto the uh, onto the cut face. Now it cleaned right off, but it just you know, it interfered with measuring it and stuff like that. So, uh, um, but anyway, handy. And like I said, I'll put that up there. Uh, Protect plastic and uh, and wrap. Wrap? Where does it say wrap? It said wrap on there. Plastic. Oh yeah. So it's 800-889 wrap uh, is the phone number. Anyway, that was five bucks uh, for that. Um, okay. So the next one here. Uh, so uh, we have a blacksmith guy, a blacksmith viewer down in Santa Barbara, in Santa Barbara blacksmith, and uh, his name's Kyle. And uh, so, Kyle, I saw this, and I thought of you when I saw this. Um, and of course, I bought it for three dollars. Um, it's a punch. Uh, it's a blacksmith punch, or just a punch. And uh, the idea is that you, you know, you have a red hot piece. And uh, you put this on there and you whap this with another hammer here and you can punch a, you know, half inch hole through. And this one doesn't look like it's been used very much. It's got a little bit of marking on that. But there's no, this isn't mushroomed and it's nice and flat still. And yes, it's half inch. Uh, so whoever was using it was using it like a, a regular hammer and not the way it was intended to be used. So... Now, I don't know what brand this is, and maybe Kyle can help us out here. Um, maybe you guys can see that there. So here's the, uh, so it's a horseshoe. It's kind of an upside down horseshoe with an A in it. Let's see if we can clean that out a little bit. And, um, and then this has got, it's got the size marked on it here, half inch. And there's no other markings on it that I can see. Um, so one of the things is, and this one actually the handles in nice shape here um, so I see heads all the time and it's not it's not difficult to put a, a new handle on something and uh, 
Um, nothing more useless than a hammer without a handle on it. So people are usually willing to sell just heads or ones with broken handles. It's a negotiating point, I guess. And uh, you can put a new uh, put a new handle on it and uh, get a nice hammer out of the deal. So anyway, that was uh, $3 for that. And then the last thing I got, this was Sunday, uh, uh, was a pack of my, uh, a partial pack of my favorite uh, kind of uh, roused about gloves here. I use these for all kinds of stuff. Uh, handling metal, uh, moving boxes, just general uh, hand protection type stuff. Um, these are these Max uh, Maxiflex uh, um, gloves and I've sent them to a couple couple folks, couple friends um, on the web and, uh, and they, they, uh, they're giving a good feedback too. Anyway, those are nice gloves. Anyway, those, those were, that was the most expensive thing. It was 20, uh, 18 bucks for those. Um, all right, so let's see what else we got. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so this uh, this is a little demo, a band song demo here. Um, Dan uh, Whiteford uh, asked how I, I cut out a notch uh, similar to this one here, um, and he noticed how square it was. And uh, anyway, he was curious about how that how that was done. Now. Some of these things, guys, if, they, if you're curious about them, just ask because a lot of the stuff I just kind of do automatically and I don't think about it real hard. I just say, oh, you know, if I think about it a little bit, I go, oh, well, that's pretty obvious. Uh, nobody needs to see that, right? But, you know, I don't know what my audience is out there, you know, what the questions are unless you ask them. And so Dan, uh, he asked the question, right? He, he stepped up and said, hey, how do you do that, right? And which is great because that's part of what we're doing here is this is um, this kind of interactive uh, back and forth a little bit. So you know, obviously, I can't do every single little thing, right? But uh, um, I figured this was uh, um, a good enough demonstration. Uh, you know, for a little meatloaf episode, we can cram one in there and uh, into the meatloaf and, and do one. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to bandsaw this out to nice sharp square corners. And uh, then we're going to do one with a, a more radical aspect ratio and, uh, and do that using the same technique. Okay, so now this is a half inch wide blade, which is uh, anybody that's run a vertical bandsaw knows uh, you can't cut a, sharp, you know, a tight corner with it, right? It just won't turn. Um, but um, you can still do stuff like this pretty easily. The, the main advantage to the uh, this, the wider blade, and the, you know that width is measured here, so this is a half inch uh, in this direction here, and this is uh, almost a millimeter thick. This is a bimetal blade, so they're a little thicker. Um, anyway, uh, so each width of blade has a particular radius, and some machines they have a chart and they show you what those are. Um, I never really pay much attention to them because. All the machines in all our shop are all half inch, uh, half inch blade and have been for years and years and years, right? Because they're really durable. Uh, the little quarter inch wide one and little eighth inch wide ones, you tighten up the, the, the tensioner too much and bink, it breaks the weld. And they don't cut very straight. So this is a good compromise between um, able, ability to turn a little bit not much, a little bit, and, and cutting nice and straight, which is generally what you're doing. You're kind of cutting straight or you cut some light curve or a circle or something like that. So anyway, I'm gonna zoom in and uh, we'll, I'll show you the technique that, we're gonna, that we use. And um, uh, actually, you know what, first uh, I'll zoom in and I'll explain the technique and then I'll do the technique. So that's probably the best. And now I'm looking at this, I should have moved this over because I'll be pretty close to the edge there, but that's okay, no big deal. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do um, to nibble this out of here. Um, the, f the first two cuts we're gonna take are gonna be right down, nice, straight, accurate cuts right into the corner. And you don't wanna overshoot. And then we'll come over here and we'll cut this one here, okay? Then what, we, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in this region over here off of that cut and then basically using the the available ability to turn of this blade we're going to turn 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 and and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get on this line 
going in this direction, like that. And then I will cut into this corner and then this piece will come out and then I'll put it in the saw this way and then we'll come back across and cut, cut that out, okay? And uh, now this one's a little more interesting because you have a lot less room to, uh, to monkey around in there. But let's do this one first. Let's check the, uh, the field of view there. Uh, you know what, I think that's going to work just fine. All right, let's go for it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the technique there. Now, you know, obviously this is wood, guys, and, but metal behaves the same way. And you can see, I, I was turning it, but I'm, I'm not forcing it, right? When you force this, you bind up against the guides here, and, you know, it can take the set off of the blade, and it's just bad, right? This causes more friction, the blade gets hot, it's just not good. So you just turn as much as it will turn, okay? Now wood you can force a little bit more because it's springy, but uh, you know, I could do that same cut in metal, no problem. This is just good for a, a demonstration. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. It's gonna be a little bit different. And, um, um, Uh, what, what else do I want to say? Um, I, that's about it. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this one, and then that's it for this little demo. Um, let's see, can you see everything? Yeah, I think that view is still good. Okay, let's go for it. get in there and aim at this corner as close as I can get it. Okay. And then you just go back and forth.
Okay. And you can actually use the front edge of this kind of like a file and you can file that, that edge nice and straight. But anyway, there, there it is. So basically you're, you're, you just keep aiming for those corners and then reversing, reversing, and then pretty soon the blade's perpendicular again and then you can make good straight cuts along, uh, along the, uh, your, your baseline there. Anyway, that's the, uh, huh. got, a, got a wrench now. Anyway, that's the technique. Uh, thanks for the uh, idea, Dan. Okay, so the last thing <clears throat> for this meatloaf um, is I built a little, uh, uh, and I didn't video this, it was, you know, pretty straightforward stuff. So, um, anyway, uh, everybody knows uh, that I use this, uh, this quill readout quite a bit, and I find this very, very, very handy. Um, but something that, uh, that I picked up myself from watching videos on YouTube is, um, um, and all you guys are familiar with uh, Keith Fenner, um, so I watch Keith Fenner's videos too, and I, uh, and I learn stuff from, uh, from folks also. Anyway, what he does is he's got, a, he's got a hand wheel here, and what he does is he just manually engages the feed, and then uses the hand wheel to kind of uh, manually control uh, the quill. And anyway, um, you know, fundamentally I, I know how this thing works, right? And, uh, but whenever we got new milling machines, the, you know, the first thing that we did was is pull these handles off and throw them away because they're, they're in your way, right? And, uh, and most people power feed anyway. But what he uses it for is um, drilling holes in uh, tricky materials like copper or brass, um, or uh, where he wants a, a little more sensitive geared feed um, and uh, where there's a, a danger of possibly sucking the drill down uh, into the part or something like that. Or maybe he wants to control the depth real accurately. So anyway, uh, I didn't have a hand wheel with my mill because guess what? Uh, somebody threw it away, right? Not me, but somebody threw it away. Anyway, I scrounged one up, or I, actually I scrounged two of them up. Um, but I have a little problem is with this quill readout on here, the thing, it won't go on. And um, um, I'm like, oh, okay. So I set it aside and I said, well, I'm not taking my quill read off, uh, readout off. And um, then I had, uh, I had popped in and, uh, and visited uh, Chuck, uh, outside Screwball Chuck. And I went over to his place and we had lunch and uh, chit chatted a little bit. And uh, anyway, he had his hand wheel laying there and it looked funny to me. Something looked funny about it. Well, what he had done, um, he made a little adapter and then he had actually turned the OD of the wheel down so that it cleared. He had a, a, a Travidial on his, uh, on, on his quill at one point. Anyway, he turned the hand wheel down and I said, oh, well, there's an idea, duh. And, um, um, so I started thinking about it again and I was like, well, I don't really want to turn the hand wheel down. You know, I'm a little, you know, it's not quite the way I want to do it. And, uh, you know, it's just me. Right. And, uh, Chuck's idea works fine. It's perfect. Um, so what I did is instead is I built a little extension and there's a little extension that I built and there's a little drive pin. And this is just a steel, uh, extension and it goes in there and it's cross pinned to that. And now this thing can go on here and plug in. And when I engage this, I get beautiful quill feed here. And um, so if I want to drill with very, very small drills and, uh, and peck, um, or if I'm drilling copper or brass and I don't have a, a drill bit that's touched up for brass, I can just very gently feed that in there or I can watch my little quill DRO, and this is all, it's all geared together now. It's not gonna jump around, it's not gonna overshoot. Um, I can, I'm watching the quill readout right now, and I'm dialing in thousandths of an inch. And obviously, you know, you can change the feed rate there. But anyway, that's, uh, that idea is kind of, you know, that's a Keith Fenner technique, and uh, I immediately saw the utility of that, and I said, whoa, I gotta, I gotta find me a hand wheel. Anyway, so I had to build an extension and that was the last thing I wanted to show you guys uh, in this episode. So now I gotta find a place to 
I gotta find a place to hang it uh, near the mill so I don't forget about it since I'm not used to using it, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, some jobs where I can use that. Uh, by the way, I have an extra one too, um, and uh, so if anybody's hung up, uh, uh, give me a shout out and uh, we'll see if we can work something out. Okay, so I, I, I got one more little thing. Um, Donald Cossett was, uh, he was making the, um, um, the collar here for the, uh, the spin indexer. He made one from scratch. And um, so he ran into a little problem, um, um, and I, I heard him talking about it, and um, I think it was just a minor problem. He found a way around it. But anyway, he ran into a reach problem uh, trying to, oops, let me pull that into the, into the frame a little better. He uh, ran into a little uh, reach problem uh, trying to reach uh, a center drill down into this area, you know, with a chuck and all that when he was uh, drilling and tapping that hole. So now they sell they sell long center drills and you can buy these and uh, but you know Don he's out in the you know the the uh, back country of Mars out there in Oregon and uh, um, UPS uh, you know has to mount an expedition to uh, to bring stuff to him but anyway uh, just kidding there Don anyway um, um, you know, and these are kind of expensive and you don't use them very much and um, so one way around that and what I've done over the years is just kind of made my own um, little extension tools for certain little jobs. Now this is, uh, you know, this is 1032 and what is that, a 6 or something? Um, I don't know. Anyway, what these are, they're just steel rod with a hole accurately put in the end of them and then a tap silver soldered into the end or a, or a drill. Now, there's no reason you can't do that with a little center drill either. Um, and, you know, you, you make it a slip fit and you silver solder it in there. When that gets all munged up, you just heat the silver solder up and you pop it out and you put a new one in. So if you got a little bit of silver solder in you know, 15 minutes or whatever, you can make one up. Um, and while you're at it, make a couple. Um, and, um, and then you can have some little extended tools so that you can do some of those, uh, those kind of weird reaching operations that you get stuck with. Uh, your chuck's too big, you can't get in there close enough, so you gotta stand off a little bit. Uh, and these are real handy for reaching down into into areas too and uh, and tapping and uh, uh, and that's probably what I was using this for is uh, reaching past something to uh, to, to drill and tap because uh, let's see that's a seven that's a for quarter 20 yeah there's a 21 so those two go together so uh, the uh, the tap drill and the tap anyway so those are easy to make up for guys that uh, want some extended tools and um, um, anyway there it is.